Good evening, welcome to WeRepair. Um, so today I have bought a bit of an unusual one for me. So I bought um, a Yamaha amp, uh, a Dolby Digital one. Um, I was intending on using for me personally, but um, unfortunately it's come a little bit more destroyed than I was expecting. Uh, so I've ordered a new front panel, but in the meantime, uh, I've got a little bit of fixing to do. So the amp itself is displaying this error as soon as you turn it on. Uh, I knew it was going to come like that. Um, so I'm going to have to try and fix it. Now, from what I've read, there are a couple of different ways to do it. Um, there is a, a way you can firmware it. Um, and also there's a way apparently you can jumper it on the motherboard. So I'm going to go for the firmware option first because that's nice and straightforward and simple. And then uh, phase two will be to... Uh, to try and solder a jumper onto the motherboard and see if we can trick it into resetting. Uh, the crux of it is um, these have got an internal battery and when uh, the, the unit's been turned off for too long, it forgets its identity and um, from there won't let you uh, do anything with it. It just comes up with this internal error warning. Um, so that's what we're gonna have a go. Um, so I have copied from the Yamaha website onto my memory stick the firmware and uh, we're going to see if we can apply it. So I will pop you onto a tripod and uh, we'll have a go. So I've got my blender stick plugged in. Um, we're going to hold down the pure direct button there and hopefully it's going to do an update and we'll be able to use it again. So let's get that done. So hold the button in, plug it in so it's got power and there we go, USB update on the screen. So we'll just keep an eye on this for a minute and uh, hopefully it will do its update and we'll be able to use it.
So unfortunately in this instance I'm going to have to take it apart and uh, we're going to have to do a bit of soldering and uh, and go from there. So I will get that done and uh, I'll come back to you. So there's essentially, it's really straightforward, as you can hopefully see. So on this side we've got two screws and then on the back here we've got one two, three, four, five, and there's two on this side as well. So I will take those all out and uh, move the camera to a more sensible place and uh, I will bring you back in. I'll be back in a sec. So uh, I'm now back. I have um, undone the screws around the edge and taken the case off just so you can see. Now I'll point it out and then I'll zoom in. Um, but just here on the board, there's two little tiny little pads um, labelled R896. Let me just zoom you in so you can see. And basically we just need to jumper those and that will let us solve this problem. So there we are. So it's just these two little pads just here. Um, so we'll get, we'll quickly do that. Just a nice big blob of solder should solve my problem. I've just got my hot air thing here. So that's all I've got handy. So let's just get that turned on. Grab some solder, a bit of flux. Let's get that melted. There we go. So that's nicely attached now. Um, as I said, this is just a temporary thing, so that will be removed after we finish with it. Um, so let's just move the camera back around now, and uh, yeah, we can move on to the next bit, and hopefully uh, you'll be able to see how we uh, how we do that. So I hope you can see that now. Um, we're getting no model info displayed. Um, so at this point, we need to press this one, um, which is. B, D, D, V, D, and that will come up and say what model it thinks it is. So we need to scroll through until we find our RX uh, V673. So I believe we press this one. So there's our RX V673, and then you need to press straight to set it. So now the asterisk is gone and that should be set. So what we need to do now is turn it off uh, and turn it back on again. And hopefully it will save. Uh, well, I say turn it off, we've got to turn it off, unsolder it and turn it back on again. So I will do that in the meantime, and hopefully we'll be set. So that has now been unsoldered. Um, so let's just plug it back in and see what happens. And hopefully it will work. So I've got nothing, which is perfect. That's what it should do. So press the power button. Well, that's not a good sign. Oh, it's flashing. I think that's a good thing. It's thinking about it. I was hoping we'd see something on the display, but clearly not. Okay, so let's try firmwareing it again now that we've uh, <laughs> we've done this. So again, unplug it, holding the pure direct digital button, plug the plug back in. And it will go through and do its update again. So I will pause the video here and I will come back to it once it's completed its update. So after um, running the update the second time, we are now getting update successful. Please power off. So I consider that to be excellent. So let's just do, let's unplug this. Let's, let's turn it off. Unplug this and turn it back on. Hmm. More investigation required. Okay. 
I'll do some digging and I'll come back to you. Well, so after a little bit more diagnostic work um, and resetting the controller, as you can see, it's now on and uh, it now seems to work absolutely fine. So yeah, just it, it needed a reset. Um, so in order to do that, I had to hold the info button and the tone control and press the power on button at the same time. Uh, and then I got it into this mode and then I turned it off and back on and now it's playing ball absolutely fine. I played through it all, but as you can see, it does work. Um, it seems to behave itself. So yeah, we're really pleased with that. It's uh, it's working as expected. So I hope you found this video helpful. Um, if you did, please uh, drop me a like, subscribe to the channel, um, leave me any comments, and I'll try and answer those questions as best I can. All right, thank you for watching.